Hey what's up, guys welcome back to our channel, so in this video we are gonna see, what if Vem Kyubi joined Harem with Naruto and went back in time, this is part 6, and if you want more then please leave a like, share and subscribe, let's get in the video. The group returns to the Namaka's compound using Shinshin no Jutsu, causing many of the other genins to complain, since they have to traverse the forest again to leave. Having already been briefed about the incident in the forest, Minato gives a slight gesture to someone hidden in the shadow. The figure disappears as soon as he sees the signal. Walking up to his team, Kakashi offers to escort his team out of the forest, after hearing about the Orochimaru incident from his former Anbu subordinates. Relieved that this part of his duty is finally over, Minato leaves the arena with the Shenshin no Jutsu, after ordering a group of Chunin to find and rescue any team still lost in the forest. So Yujito chan any luck with that coded message? Naruto asks as Minato enters the living room. I already figured it out two days after we got to the tower. What coded message? Minato asks. We found a scroll with a coded message from a team of Aim Nin. When we took their weapons pouches, Yujito says, it was from someone named Rakishu Aoi to Orochimaru, asking for permission to join Oto in exchange for information on Aim's condition after the revolt and a weapon called Rage no Ken. Rakishu Aoi he has the nerve offering the Rage no Ken to Orochimaru to join him, Minato says, and what is this about a revolt in AIM? I didn't know there was a rebellion in AIM. I don't have anything to do for a month. Do you want me to go and bring back the information and the sword? Naruto asks. You're not planning on going without us are you Naruto-kun? Yujito says, if you are going, then we're going with you. We are a team Naruto. We won't let you go out and deal with a nuke nin on your own, Gara says. And there is the potential that Orochimaru will be targeting Aoi as well, Minato says, I already sent Jiraiya to keep an eye on Kabuto, and his team most of the Jounins will be training with their teams who can I send that can protect you from Orochimaru. You do know that there is another member of the Senin in the village beside Jiraiya and Orochimaru right? A voice says from the stairs behind Minato, I'll go with the brats Minato. If Orochimaru shows up, I wouldn't mind showing him exactly how I feel about him. Tsunade Ba Chan, it would be wonderful if you are willing to go, Minato says, I'll send Ibiki with you to extract the information from Aoi, since Anko is out of commission right now, and I don't think she would be the best choice if Orochimaru is involved anyway. But what about Ranmaru? Naruto asks. The kid'll be fine. I have him on a different diet to get some more nutrients in him, Tsunade says, Rin and Shizu know what diet I have him on. Are you sure? Raigo won't be too happy if Ranmaru doesn't get any better, Naruto says as Tsunade glares toward him, all right then. All right, so when should we head out? Tsunade asks. I'll send the message to Ibiki. Be prepared to leave tomorrow morning. How did you come about knowing how to break a code? Tsunade asks after Minato went back to his office. I get bored easily so I just start taking random books from the study and reading them. Then I found this one book on introductory code breaking, and I find that kind of fun, almost like a puzzle, so I just started reading more and more about them, Yujito says. A genin understanding how to break advanced codes, you must be some kind of hidden genius. Actually, this code isn't all that advanced. It's more like an old perverted version of Kanoha's code, Yujito says, I guess with Rakushu Aoi being a former Kanoha Nin, he never bothered to create a new code, figuring that Orochimaru will be able to figure out the message with just the slight changes. Well, no one can claim that he is smart, Tsunade says. The Reijin no Ken belong to the Nidame Hokage right? Yes. So what brat? Tenten Chan should be happy if I can get that sword back then, Naruto says, well, she'll be happy if I bring back the sword no matter what. I still don't get your point brat. Well, the Reijin no Ken belong to the Nidame Hokage, Senju Utabarama. Which means that it's a Senju family heirloom. Which means that at some point in the future, the sword will belong to her if I bring it back, Naruto says. With how Tenten Chan is with weapons, she'll probably be willing to thank you in a very special way if you bring that super rare sword back, Yujito says, smirking. And you had best not try to take advantage of that if you don't want to put all the burden of continuing the Namaka's line onto a Kemi. No. If you do that then I won't get to have fun with Naruto-kun. Yujito screams, wrapping her arms around Naruto's shoulders from behind. Then he better behave himself. But what if Tenten is the one who jumps Naruto-kun? Yujito asks. I'll make sure she won't, at least if she wants the sword for the tournament she won't. Are you all talking about me? I've been sneezing the past five minutes walking home, Tenten says from the door as she enters with Tamari. 
Are you sure you didn't catch something in the forest, dear? Tsunade asks. No, Shizuni chan already checked before heading off to the hospital, Tenten says as she walks into the living room. Can I trust you two to train properly while I'm out on a mission with these three brats? Tsunade asks, it'll probably last around a week or so. But don't they have to train for the tournament? Why are they going out on a mission? Minato trusts them to continue training while out on the mission. Can we go on this mission too? Tamari asks. Sorry kids, Naruto's team already have experience in dealing with foreign ninjas, but yours have not. But how can we get experience if we can't go on these missions? Tenten complains. Make Chunin and you will be assigned these kinds of missions on a team with senior Chunins. That's not fair Tenten says pouting. Tenten Chan, don't be like this. I promise I'll bring back a gift from the mission for you, Naruto says, I guarantee that it's a gift you love. You promise? Of course Tenten Chan. The next morning, Tsunade leads the three genin and the fox to the village gate to meet with the last member of the squad for the mission. Bowing his head to greet the slug senin, Ibiki quietly moves into position to the genin's right, while Tsunade moves to their left, so they can protect them in case of an attack from the flanks, leaving Gara to protect the team's backs and Ginko to scout the areas ahead with her sense of smell. Tsunade ba chan, Yujito says as Ibiki flinched, is the Rage no Ken a lightning based sword like its name suggests, or does it look like a lightning bolt like the Horatio no Jutsu? It's a lightning based sword. As far as I know it looks just like any other short sword, Tsunade says, ignoring the stunned look on Ibiki's face for her, ignoring the children's nickname for the slug Sanin, the Rage no Ken can generate lightning like Raiga swords. Oh, Yujito says, do you think Tenten Chan can handle a sword like that? She'll manage. She's already training with Yuigao on using close range weapons. It's just that I don't know if she can make use of the lightning element. I can help Tenten Chan learn how to use lightning element if you want, Yujito says. Let's focus on getting the Rage no Ken back in one piece before trying to decide how to best use it brat. Tsunade Sama, if I may, Ibiki says, are we to assume that Rakushu Aoi does not realize that we have detected his plan and will act according to the coded message? First rule of being a ninja Ibiki. Never assume anything, Tsunade says. Then how shall we plan our actions? Assume the enemy is waiting for us, Tsunade says, even if Arachimaru knows that we know of this meeting, he knows that Kanoha will send someone, and we know that Arachimaru has interest in several people in Kanoha's ranks. All right, so we assume ambush and reinforcements, Naruto says. From both Rakushu Aoi's side and Arachimaru's side, Ibiki says. We are already dealing with at least five shinobi, Rakushu Aoi, his genin squad, and whoever Arachimaru is sending, Yujito says, Aoi is defecting, so there shouldn't be too many people with him beyond his genin team, and Odo is a newfound village, so they won't be about to send too many people. It is also important that we capture Rakushu Aoi alive, Gara says, and hold him prisoner as we defeat everyone else. That also contribute to the difficulty of the mission. It appears that they are already thinking like Chunin Tsunade Sama, Ibiki says smirking. They grew up around all those Chunin and Jaun and Ibiki, Tsunade says, and they are taught by Minato and Kishina, do you think they would behave otherwise? Then all that remains is to see if they are capable of surviving difficult missions. This isn't some crazy test to earn a field promotion, is it? Naruto asks. Hokage Sama knows that you are more than capable of making quick work of most of your opponents in the tournament, Ibiki says, so he ordered me to observe your behavior on this mission to see if you possess his qualities of a chunin. Your performance in this mission is only going to be used as additional evidence to prove your worthiness of being a chunin. It's not going to decide whether or not you become a Chunin on its own, Tsunade says, the success of this mission still takes priority over your individual performances, so I want you to focus on that first and foremost. Nodding their head in agreement, the group sets off toward their destination. It took them another two days of traveling to arrive at their destination. On the way, the three genins started talking to Ibiki to get a better idea on the actual inner workings of the torture and interrogation department. They'd heard embellished stories from Anko about the department's work, but they'd much rather listen to the accurate account from the head of the department. Ibiki was more than happy to provide the information, if only for sparking their interest in the field and laying the groundwork for recruiting them into the department later on. So which country are we in again? Naruto asks as he looks out to the sea from the cliff. Yumi no Kuni, Tsunade says, you should be able to tell just from this vast sea. Actually this place kind of reminds me of Nami no Kuni. Yumi no kuni wait, Yumi no kuni? 
Naruto asks before thinking to himself, I wonder if I'll get to meet her again this time. Something the matter Naruto-kun? No, it's nothing. Don't worry about it, Naruto says. My mom said that there used to be plenty of ships coming into ports around Yumi no Kuni from Yuzu no Kuni and Mizu no Kuni. Well there was, Tsunade says, though Mizu no Kuni ships don't really come by this part of the country anymore, especially with the civil war still going on in Kuritakur, and you already know about Yuzu no Kuni. Our objective is to locate Rakishu Aoi, who is supposed to be awaiting Arachimaru's men near the dock am I correct? Ibiki says. Yes, but we should alter our appearance before entering the town. Aoi used to be a Kanohanin after all, Tsunade says, and he is most certainly familiar with who you are Ibiki. Why is that? Yujito asks. Aoi used to be the instructor of Marino Idate, Naruto says. Marino Idate? Wait a minute. Marino? Yujito says. He was my younger brother. Oh, Yujito says, so. He's a fugitive from Kanoha for stealing the rage in no Ken, Ibiki says. But Rakishu Aoi is the one with the sword. Aoi tricked Idate into stealing the sword and a secret scroll, Naruto says, Ibiki got some of those scars on his head from chasing after Aoi. So this mission means a lot to you doesn't it Ibiki-san? Yujito asks. I must put my mission ahead of my emotions, Ibiki says with a smirk, but after we captured Aoi and I have the opportunity to interrogate him for information, I might take a bit of liberty to the means of torture. You can have all the fun you want with him, as long as we get the information Ibiki-san, Naruto says before thinking to himself, and I'll see if we can take the long way back to Kanoha through Cha no Kuni. When they arrive at the dock, they spot a small boat with many people gathered around it, helping people who are soaked to the bones onto solid ground. Confused, the transformed ninjas head toward the dock to try and gather some information. So what happened? Ibiki asks as he helps another man today land. The Kaima attacked my ship, the man says, I should have known better than to set sail with the Kaima round, but I thought if I leave late at night. The Kaima doesn't sleep, you know that, someone in the crowd says, doesn't matter if it's morning or night, the Kaima will attack every ship that ventures into its territory. The Kaima? Ibiki asks. You folks aren't from around here are you? We're from the west, from Kei's no Kuni, Naruto says, we're traveling merchants hoping to get to Cha no Kuni to sell our glassware and buy tea leaves. Well you're out of luck. There are no boats going out as long as the Kaim is around. Do you know if we can rent a boat, buy one even? I'm sure you can find some old fisherman and convince him to sell you his boat, one of the villagers says, I wouldn't recommend heading out, even if you can get your hands on a boat though. You're just wasting your money and even lives as long as the Kaima is out there. Your best option might be head a few towns over and see if you can catch a ship there away from the Kaima's active zone, another person says. I see. Thank you for the advice, Tsunade says, we'll head to the hotel, you three go restock our supplies. The three youngsters in disguise nod their head and turn toward the market as Tsunade and Ibiki head to the hotel. Separating, the three head off in different directions to gather as much information about the Kaima and their target as possible. Once they are satisfied with what they have, they regroup at the hotel to discuss what they have found out so far. So what did you guys hear about Aoi and this Kaima? Tsunade asks. We haven't heard anything about Aoi, but about the Kaima, there were people who just simply vanished in this town and never heard from again, Yujito says, after that the Kaima started attacking the ships. Orochimaru approved of this location so he must be familiar with this place, Tsunade says, and after what he did in Kanoha, I wouldn't be surprised if he had something to do with all these disappearances. There was one person who came back after disappearing, Naruto says, met her when she was shopping for food. People here don't exactly treat her kindly. How unkind exactly? Gara asks. Jinshuriki level unkind. At that Gara and Yujito both flinched. Tsunade having some inkling of what their lives were like prior to arriving in Kanoha, winced from the words despite years of emotional training as part of her shinobi career. Treating a civilian with that kind of malice, Yujito growls, what kind of monster are they? Not saying that it's right, but people fear what they don't understand, Naruto says, not to mention that they hate the fact that their loved ones didn't come back like she did. So they pin all their anger and frustration on her? Naruto, what do you intend to do? Tsunade asks, putting her hand on Yujito's shoulder to calm the girl down. She's not very trusting of anyone, but I can try to approach her to see if the disappearances have any connection to Orochimaru, Naruto says, I already helped her once today, and I'm not even from this village, I should be able to gain her trust a bit easier. 
We can't let you do this by yourself, it's too risky, Yujito says. She's our only lead right now and this is the only way. I've sent Ibiki out to secure a boat from one of the fishermen, Tsunade says, we'll be staying in this town until he comes back with a ship and we can sail out. Take this time and see what you can do Naruto. Understood Tsunade Ba-chan, Naruto says, giving Tsunade a mocking salute. Just get out of here you little brat before you make me angry enough to crush you like a bug. Ma, Shino and the other Aburam won't be too happy to hear you say that Tsunade Ba-chan, Naruto says before ducking under a chair thrown by Tsunade. Alright, alright, I'm going. Putting his hands on the back of his head, Naruto takes a walk around a beach in the village. He still remembers where Aisiribi's house is, but he can't exactly just go over there unannounced without drawing suspicion. While he's still thinking of a way to approach the green hair girl, Naruto wanders off the beach and walks onto the sea, with his shinobi instincts kicking in, so he can remain on top of the water while his mind is distracted. About 10 steps in, while it's still not apparent that he is walking on top of the water surface, Naruto is shaken out of his stupor by a loud scream from the coast, just as a large wave is crashing ashore. Looking back toward the shore, Naruto completely misses the wall of water coming upon him, sweeping him off his feet and swallowing him up. When he tries to swim back toward the surface, Naruto notices Aisiribi swimming toward him trying to rescue him. Playing along, Naruto stops struggling and allows Aisiribi to bring him ashore. Once Aisiribi manages to drag to soak Naruto back to shore, Naruto keeps his eyes closed and holds his breath to pretend to be unconscious, hoping that Aisiribi will take him back to her house like last time. Instead, he feels Aisiribi putting her hands on his chest and applying pressure. Thinking that she's hoping to shake him awake, Naruto desperately tries to maintain his guise, hoping that his plan will succeed. He thinks that he might have succeeded when he feels that Aisiribi lifting her hands, but soon his eyes snaps open when he feels Aisiribi crushing her lips on his while pinching his nose and blowing into his mouth. Shocked, Naruto bolts up, smashing their teeth together and pushing Aisiribi off of him. Still holding her mouth in pain, Aisiribi cautiously approaches Naruto, who is having a coughing fit from holding his breath for so long. Are you alright? Aisiribi asks, though her voice is muffled by the fact that she is still covering her mouth. Yeah yeah, Naruto says after finally deciphering what Aisiribi said, are you the one that saved me? Yes, Aisiribi says, finally removing her hands after making sure that Naruto didn't knock any tooth loose. Thanks. I thought I was a goner when that rouge wave swallowed me up, Naruto says, if I die by the hands of the Kaima at least I can say that I went down fighting. It'd be embarrassing if I died while taking a stroll on the beach. You are going to travel by boat from this town? Despite knowing about the Kaima? Well, we don't have much of a choice. My master is on a tight schedule and has to get to Cha no Kuni by a specific date. We won't make it in time if we travel to another town before setting sail. Your lives are more important than some business deal. You know how those big merchants are, Naruto says, money is more important than their own lives. That's no reason to drag you down with them. Servants like us, we have no choice but to follow our master's orders. That's just arg. That's just not fair. Aisiribi says, they have no rights to make us do what we don't want to do. I wish there is something we can do about it, Naruto says, extending his hand, names Naruto by the way. Naruto? Aisiribi says, covering her mouth to hide her giggling. I know. My dad must have had a weird fetish of Raymond or something. Aisiribi. My name is Aisiribi. Well, Aisiribi-chan, I really should go ba chu My house isn't too far away. Maybe you should come over and dry your clothes while I get you something warm to drink at least. I don't want to be a bother. Don't worry. It'd be a shame for you to die from pneumonia after I went through the trouble of pulling you out of the water. Well okay. Thanks Aisiribi Chan. That night, a completely dry Naruto returns to the motel to report on his progress. Walking into Tsunade room, he finds Ibiki, Yujito, and Gara waiting inside along with Tsunade. So, what kept you out there all afternoon? Tsunade asks. I made contact with Aisiribi. Spent the afternoon with her, Naruto says, doesn't look like Rachimaru or any of his goons are in contact with her though. So exactly how did you make contact with the target? Ibiki asks. Naruto proceeds to spend the next half an hour telling them every little detail about what he did with Aisiribi all afternoon. However, the entire group's attention was only focused on the beginning of the story. If what you said is true, and the rouge wave was as large as you claim to be, 
the resulting riptide would have been too strong for any civilian to swim through, Ibiki says, that young lady isn't exactly just a normal civilian, not with those skills. I think it's safe to assume that she has crossed path with either Rachimaru or someone associated with Rachimaru before in her lifetime, Tsunade says. So what should we do? Naruto asks. Ibiki already secured a sailing boat for us, Tsunade says, we set sail tomorrow as planned to draw out this Kaima and see if we can find any connection between the monster and Rachimaru. Maybe we can find some clues about Aoi if we can find Rachimaru's men in this town. The next morning, the group puts up a show of moving all kinds of goods and merchandises onto the boat for the entire town to see, hoping to catch the eyes of the Kaima or the monster's associates. All around the port, the people are either making a last-ditch effort to convince Tsunade to hold off setting sail or shaking their heads at another group throwing their lives away. Gara, if we get attacked out there, I want your sand platforms ready, Naruto says as they move the last of the supposed merchandises on board, you are at a disadvantage fighting a battle in the ocean, but you can help us with aerial support. Understood. After making sure that everything is where they are supposed to be, the group set sails despite the last-ditch effort of some of the townspeople. As soon as they are out of sight of the people at the port, the group immediately drop their henge and prepare for battle. Half an hour into their journey, a loud explosion rocks the ship, sending all the crates lining the deck of the boat into the sea. Looking out toward the bow, the group spots a man in a lab coat standing there with some form of merman. Although the man is focused on the group, the Kaima next to him seems to be distracted searching for something on the deck. Meanwhile, Gara is already hovering in the air on his sand platform, while all the others get in their battle stance. Charging forward, Tsunade and Ibiki tries to engage the man in the lab coat. Suddenly, someone jumps out of the water and intercepts Ibiki, leaving Tsunade to attack the man in the lab coat, while another attacks Yujito, leaving Naruto and Ginko in her fox form against the Kaima. Moving at surprising speed, the Kaima knocks Ginko out of the way before grabbing Naruto by the collar and lifting him in the air. Where is Naruto? The Kaima says, tell me and I might spare your life. Have you never heard of the baby hero? Naruto says smiling before the combination of Gaara's sand and Ginko's attacks chase the Kaima back. The baby hero? The Kaima mutters before her eyes widening, the baby hero Namek is Naruto? Naruto, what kind of trouble are you involved in now? Gara asks, hovering a couple of feet behind Naruto. Gara, go help Ibiki. Ginko, go help Yujito, Naruto says, I can deal with this myself. You lied to me. Everything was a lie. I would never lie to you Isoribi-chan, Naruto says as Isoribi flinched at being identified, I told you I would have to face the Kaima. If I have my ways, we would have to go to Chano Kuni. In the minds of those big merchants, money is more important than their lives, at least until they're staring death in the face. And as a genin, I really do have to follow the orders of my superiors. You lied to me about who you are. Isoribi screams, I thought I finally found someone who understands some semblance of the pain I feel you lied to me. Using the flexibility he gained from training with Anko, Naruto easily dodges away from Isoribi's frantic water attacks. Moving in, Naruto slips behind Isoribi and wraps his arms around her, pinning her back against him. Ignoring the pain from where her scales are digging into his skin, Naruto keeps his grip on Isoribi to prevent her escape. Listen to me Isoribi, do you think a creep like him would ever say anything truthful to you? Naruto says, tightening his grip on the girl, I don't know what he said or did to make you follow his orders, but I know you're not this kind of person. If you really are a monster, you would never have pulled me out of that rouge wave. Let go of me. Isoribi screams, finally breaking out of Naruto's grasp, I don't know if he will keep his promise or not, but he's the only one who knows how to make me human again. He's not the only one. The woman fighting him over there is Senju Utsunade, one of the Densetsu no Sanin, and the best medical ninja in the world, Naruto says, trying to move in to subdue Isoribi again, I'm sure she can help you fix whatever that creep did to you. The fact that such a famous shinobi, one that even a civilian like her has heard of, is fighting in this battle is enough of a shock to Isoribi that Naruto manages to capture her again. Sinking to her knees, tears start streaming down Isoribi's face. Why? Isoribi mutters, reverting to her human form. What do you mean Isoribi-chan? Why are you doing all this for me? I don't want to see anyone suffers, at least no one that doesn't deserve it, Naruto says before looking over toward the doctor, personally, I wouldn't mind seeing Ibiki-san and Anko-ni-san get their hands on that slime. Turning toward Naruto, Isoribi follows his glare and ends up looking at the man in the lab coat. 
hissing at the man, Aisiribi turns her attention back toward Naruto, only to find him pulling the scales out of his arms. Staring at the now exposed scales on her human body, Aisiribi rubs her arms, subconsciously trying to hide the scales from sight. Seeing what she is doing, Naruto grabs hold of Aisiribi's arm and pulls them away. Naruto-san, please let go. No. I won't let you look down on yourself anymore. Your arms you got hurt because of me. Hey, I heal pretty quick, Naruto says, showing Aisiribi his unblemished arms, besides, I guess I did deserve a little bit of that punishment. How could you there were scratches and cuts. Like I said, I heal pretty quick. Naruto-san. I will not fight against you anymore. Should you not go and assist your friends? Aisiribi says, distracting herself from Naruto's healing powers before her mind shuts down. They'll be fine. Those two grunts won't cause them any problems. Soon enough, Yujito, Gara, and Ibiki carry the unconscious forms of Akadu Yoroi and Tsurugi Misumi back to the ship. Tsunade herself had driven the researcher, whose name is they gather from Aisiribi to be Amachi, back to the sea. Seeing Aisiribi working for the Kanohanin, Amachi lets out a growl in anger before warping his lips into a sneer. Chi. I knew you would betray me one day. It was only a matter of whether you turn your back on me first, or you outlive your usefulness and become another one of my dissect samples, Amachi says, you see foolish little girl, I had no intention of ever returning you to your human form. All you are good for is provide me with data and funding to complete my research, to create the perfect amphibious soldiers. Gathering his chakra, Amachi's form slowly morphs into that of the Kaima, shocking everyone except Naruto. Behind him, water starts rising up until it becomes a giant blob and releasing a groan-like scream. Observe, the results of my research. Amachi screams, the perform amphibious form and the great sea monster Yumabozu. Um any idea how we're going to deal with that thing? Yujito asks as the group looks up nervously. Great, I completely forgot about that monstrosity Naruto thinks to himself, and I can't even summon Gamabunta this time round, cause I didn't sign the toad contract, that thing is just a large mass of water held together by chakra, Tsunade says, we have two choices, destroy the chakra itself or destroy the water to make the chakra disperse. It doesn't exactly has a stable chakra system that we can destroy, nor do we have any techniques remotely similar to the Hyuga in destroying chakra source, Naruto says, we have to destroy the water then. Suetan techniques most certainly won't work. Doton techniques can absorb, but can't destroy water. Fuetan techniques can disperse, but not destroy water either, Gara says, that leaves Katen techniques to evaporate the water by heating and Raten techniques to break down the water by electrolysis. We aren't exactly sufficient in Katen techniques, Yujito says, but I'm pretty good at Raten techniques. We'll need something to lead the electricity into the monster. Just blasting a body of water with lightning won't cause electrolysis, Naruto says. Do you kids have a plan? Ibiki asks, not taking his eyes of Amachi or Yumabozu, if you do then Tsunade-sama, and I will leave that monster to you and apprehend Amachi. Yeah. Go ahead, Naruto says, we need him to figure out exactly what he did to Aisiribi-chan after all. Ginko-chan, keep an eye on Aisiribi-chan alright? Yujito says as Tsunade and Ibiki go after Amachi. Yujito, how long do you need to prepare for the strongest Raten technique you know? Gara asks. My strongest Raten technique is Raten. Jian. Give me one minute. So how are we going to do this Naruto, Gara asks. We'll need something to lead the electricity into the core of that monster, Naruto says, man, I wish Tenten chan is here right now. No time for regrets Naruto, Gara says, Yujito already started preparing for her technique. What? Can't I complain a little, Naruto says smirking, did you pack any ninja wire and Vuma shuriken? I have just the thing, Gara says, returning the smirk. I think the water is dense enough that the weapon won't just go right through, Naruto says, I'm more worried about that thing pushing the Fiuma shuriken back out after they punch through. I was thinking the same thing, Gara says, so distract that thing until the last possible moment. Distraction tactics is my specialty, Naruto says, you're better at throwing weapons than I am, create a bunch and throw my Fiuma shuriken, while I buy you guys some time. Understood. Using Taiju Kage Bunshin no Jutsu, Naruto orders his clones to swarm against Yumabozu. Back toward the back of the ship, Tsunade and Ibiki engages Amachi, who, despite his vast arsenal of Suetan techniques gained by his transformation, did not stand a chance against the head of the torture and interrogation department and the head of the medical department of Kanoha and was captured after on a few minutes. 
The only reason that the fight even lasted that long is due to the event that transpired on the other end of the ship. Isoribi, Tsunade, Ibiki, and Amachi all watch in awe as at least 200 Naruto rush up Yumabozu's body, punching whatever open space visible from the mass of Kage Bunshin. One of the Kage Bunshin slips in with a kunai trying to slash at the monster, only for the blade to pass right through. Frowning, the Kage Bunshin dispels to relay the memory back to the original. We have a problem, Naruto says, looking toward Gara standing next to him. What's the matter Naruto? The water isn't as dense as I thought it would be. But the clones are walking right on its body like they are walking on dry land. Water walking. The clones are treating the body of that monster just like any other body of water. So what should we do? Gara asks as Yumabozu picks up several Kage Bunshin and swallows them, causing them to dispel. I have an idea, Naruto says, do you have the ninja wires tied onto the Vuma shuriken? Yes. Give them to me. Looking toward his friend in confusion, Gara slowly nods his head and hands over the two weapons. Creating two more Kage Bunshin, Naruto sends them off toward Yumabozu with the Vuma shuriken. Wading through the crowd of the first batch of Kage Bunshin, the two new Bunshin rush up toward the monster's mouth where the monster swallow them whole, causing them to dispel, leaving the two Vuma shuriken behind and the ninja wire leading back to where Naruto and Gara are standing. Naruto-kun, Gara, out of the way. Yujito screams, and the two responds by diving away, Raiten. Jian, directing her attack on the ninja wires, the current follows the metal lines into the monster's body through its mouth. Strengthened by the dissolved salt in the seawater making up the monster's body, the electric current wreaks havoc on Yumabozu, sparking a flash of bright light where the two Vyuma shuriken are bound inside the monster's body. Soon, bubbles start to form around the two Vyuma shuriken, causing the Yumabozu to groan in pain. Eventually, enough gases build up inside Yumabozu's body and start to break through the chakra holding the water together. Within minutes, Yumabozu's entire body disappears, the only thing left behind are two destroyed Vyuma shuriken. Yujito-chan, are you alright? Naruto asks, catching Yujito as she collapses from chakra exhaustion. Yeah. I've never had to hold that technique for so long. I'm just a bit tired. Good job kids, Tsunade says, rejoining the group as Ibiki drags a bound Amachi along behind her. Now you better start talking, Naruto says as Ibiki throws Amachi against the wall of the quarterdeck, Arachimaru was supposed to meet someone here. Where are they? So that's why he left so quickly. He fled the scene and expects me to hold you guys back for him, Amachi says, like hell I'll help him after he abandoned my research. He went to Cha no Kuni. Cha no Kuni eh? Guess we'll be going there after all, Tsunade says, now where is your lab? I'm not leaving this place until I make sure none of your despicable research is left behind. I can take you there, Isoribi says. Hmm even better. Alright, Ibiki, take these three to the cells downstairs, Tsunade says, gesturing toward Amachi and the unconscious Yoroi and Miss Yumi, you and Gara guard the ship, the rest of us will head to the laboratory. Send a message to Minato and have him send someone here to pick up the prisoners too. Here, Naruto says, giving Ibiki three slips of paper. What are they? Ibiki asks, taking them for Naruto. Chakra suppression seals. Slap them on, and those three goons won't be able to access any chakra, Naruto says, although they don't actually suppress them, just disturb their chakra control so badly that they won't be able to mold chakra. After all, any living being needs chakra to survive and we don't want them dead. Where did you get your hands on something like that? Tsunade asks. My dad gave them to me before we headed out, Naruto says, he told me that these will make it easier for us to capture and hold someone like Aoi. I still have nine of them left after using up those three. That Minato thought of everything didn't he? I didn't even know he created these kinds of seals. Tsunade says, anyway, we should head to that hidden laboratory now. Following Isoribi's lead, the Kanoha Shinobi arrives at Amachi's hidden lab. After sealing away all of Amachi's research documents and destroying all the remaining specimens, the group returned to the ship to wait for Kanoha's reinforcements. It took the message one day to get to Kanoha, and another two for Minato to send a squad consisting of Anko, Shizun, Genma, and Aoba to pick up the prisoners. When given the choice, Aisaribi decided to stay with Naruto's group as they set off to Cha no Kuni. Given the terrain of the area they are traveling to, Tsunade agreed that it would be beneficial to have someone of Isoribi's abilities along for assistance. So Tsunade Ba Chan, did you pay back all the debt you owe in Cha no Kuni yet? Debt? Isoribi asks. 
If you're smart brat, you'd be quiet the rest of the trip, Tsunade says, shaking her fist at Naruto. Naruto-kun, stop antagonizing Tsunade Ba-chan, Yujito says, hugging Naruto from the back. How could they show such disrespect toward Tsunade-sama and get away with it? Ibiki asks. Tsunade-sama doesn't really mind, Gara says, at least for now. If Naruto still calls her that in a few years, I don't know how she'll react. Why is that? Isoribi asks, curious. Naruto is dating Tsunade-sama's daughter. If they get married, Naruto can't exactly call her Ba-chan anymore, Gara says. Naruto-san is dating Tsunade-sama's daughter? But what about Yujito-chan? Naruto is under the Clan Restoration Act, Ibiki says, even though Hokage-sama is still alive and he has a daughter, the fact remains that he is the only male who can continue the Namakas and Uzumaki lines. Nodding their heads, the group turn their attention back toward Naruto, Yujito, and Tsunade. For the next 15 minutes, they watched Tsunade making empty threats at Naruto for his teasing about her bad luck at gambling, while the boy ignores Yujito's flirting attempts. Before things can get really out of hand, the ship finally arrives at its destination. So how should we go about this? Naruto asks, disembarking for the ship. It would be nice to have some sort of contact in this town, instead of just searching around blind like we did in Yumi no Kuni, Yujito says, it was by sheer luck that Naruto-kun met Isoribi-chan. Contact A? Tsunade says, I guess we could go and see if Wasabi Jirauchu Oyabin has any information. Plus I'm sure he'd be willing to let us stay with him during this mission. Who's Wasabi Jirauchu Oyabin? Yujito asks. He's an old friend of mine, Tsunade says, helped me out quite a bit with my money problem. Well, if he's going to let us stay, I don't see why we should turn down free lodging, Naruto says, lead the way Tsunade Ba-chan. Dugging under Tsunade's punch, Naruto looks back toward the slug princes with a Cheshire grin. Grumbling, Tsunade turns around and heads into town, with the rest of the group following behind her. As soon as they arrived at the large compound, the group was immediately escorted to the meeting room, where they have been waiting for the past 30 minutes. Just as the three genin, Isoribi, and the fox is about to doze off, the door opens, revealing Wasabi Jirauchu and an attendant carrying a new pot of tea to replacing the emptying and culling one left in the room when the group first arrived. Sorry about the wait, there was a small problem that required my attention. The Wagarashi stirring up trouble again? Tsunade asks. I would assume so, but I haven't been able to pin it on them yet, Jirauchu says, so what brought you all the way out here Tsunade? Last I heard, you gave up your gambling ways and went back to Kanoha. I'm afraid that we're here on business Jirauchu Oyabin, Tsunade says, we're here to investigate the presence of a nukenin from Kanoha. A nukenin you say? Jirauchu says, what makes you think that there is someone like that here in Cha no Kuni? We obtained the information from an enemy ninja that we captured. And how strong is this nuke nin that you speak of Tsunade? He was a jounin before he left Kanoha. A jounin eh? Is there a particular reason that you are asking these questions with Sabi-sen? Ibiki asks. Well a jounin nuke nin would certainly explain some of the things that has been going on around here, Jirauchu says, if it's at all possible Tsunade, I would like to commission you and the young ninjas to look into the matter. I think there is a very good chance that our goals are aligned. A side mission? Tsunade says, looking back toward the others. The only reaction she received were shrugs from the three genins. Ibiki remained his emotionless self as always, and Isoribi decided to stay out of the conversation, since she really didn't have much of a say in the matter. Shrugging her shoulders, Tsunade turns her attention back to Jirauchu and accepts the mission. Wonderful, I'll have my assistant show you to your rooms and bring you all the pertinent information, Jirauchu says, excuse me, but I have to write a response to Daimyo-sama's inquest as to what has been happening lately. You wouldn't believe how angry he was in the last ladder. The frown never left Ibiki's face as the assistant leads the group to the guest rooms. However, he did notice the same frown on Yujito and Gara's faces. Looking toward Naruto, Ibiki is surprised to find that, on the surface, he seems to be completely unaware of his teammate's emotion, but in actuality, he is making subtle gestures toward the fox to move nearer to Yujito to provide some comfort to the girl. That old man was lying to us, Yujito says after the assistant has left, he was so worried when you told him we are here because of a nuke named Tsunade Ba-chan, but he relaxes when you said it's a jounin we are looking for. I bet he hired a weak ninja to cause all those trouble himself to make this other person look bad. I've known him for a long time. Jirauchu Oibin isn't that type of person, Tsunade says, though I have to agree that his behavior was odd. 
He did look glad that we were looking for a Jounin. You knew him the longest Sunade Ba Chan. If he isn't involved, then I guess it doesn't really matter to our mission, Yujito says, let's just go through these documents and see if there's anything in there. That's my Yujito Chan, always loves to piece together a puzzle, Naruto says. Wasabi Sen is correct about one thing, Ibiki says, reading through some of the documents, no common street thug is capable of doing some of these things. It has to be the work of a shinobi, a competent one at that. So we can pretty much rule out Jenin, Tsunade says. Unless they are under very strict orders and observations from the Chunin or Jounin in charge, Yujito says, our Rakishu did have three Jenin under his command. But Ibiki Sen is right, based on their performance in the Chunin exam, there is no way they are capable of doing these things on their own. There are some legend of black rain on the outskirt of town, Gara says, flammable black rain. Is that even possible? If they are from a Megakurno Sato, then yes, Tsunade says, there are people in that village that can control rain, and Zuotin. Kaku no Jutsu fits that description. It's not water coming down with that technique, but actual flammable oil. That would explain the large-scale fire that I'm seeing in some of these reports, Naruto says, some villagers are saying that it's a sign of God denouncing the Wasabi family's right as leader of this area. Spread by Wagarashi family's goons no doubt, Tsunade says, I doubt those people actually own the houses that were burned down. It does appear odd that there are several instances where both houses on either side were destroyed, but the one in the middle was completely untouched, Gara says. Why would Orochimaru have Aorakishu do all these things here in Cha no Kuni? Ibiki says, he has nothing obvious to gain from these actions. It is possible that he has a backroom deal with the Wagarashi family, Tsunade says, he already had a base in Yumi no Kuni, it's possible that he wants to establish another one here in Cha no Kuni. Degarashi port looks like a pretty busy port town as well, it could be much more similar to the case in Yumi no Kuni than we think, Yujito says, it could be another way to secure more money. Right now we are pretty certain that the three genin from Omegakur no Sato is involved, Naruto says, but do we have anything concrete linking all these incidents with our Orochimaru? There might be, Yujito says, lifting up a particular scroll, most of the earlier incidents involved clear case of arson, but lately, the fire was started by lightning strikes after the black rain. Lightning strike? Ibiki says, well, that would certainly put more stock into the divine judgment theory. You're not thinking that the lightning strikes were coming from the Reiji no Ken, are you? Tsunade asks. I came from Kaminari no Kuni, I know how lightning works. There is no way random lightning strikes could hit something, so precisely to cause the kind of results Gara, Yujito says, once or twice is bad luck, but there is no way it could be random after happening so many times. What about death tolls and injuries, do we have anything on that? Naruto asks. There hasn't been any reports of death yet, most of the injuries were light to moderate. The ratio of injured to unscathed is about half and half, Garus says, half the time the people inside were injured by the fire, the other half managed to get out of the place, just as the fire started. Let me guess, almost like they knew the fire was coming, Naruto says. Precisely, Garus says. And those are the ones yapping about divine judgment too I bet, Yujito grumbles. I think it's safe to arrive at that conclusion, Gara says, smirking. So we can pretty much conclude that Aoi Rakishu and his three genin are involved, Tsunade says, but we haven't had a hint of proof that Orochimaru is involved outside of Amachi pointing us in this direction. Well, we might have the proof after we captured and interrogated Aoi Rakishu, Naruto says. Let's just put together what we have right now, Tsunade says, our primary objective remains the capture of Aoi Rakishu. Our secondary objective is to deal with the three genin working with Aoi Rakishu and end the attacks in this town. Any questions? Dead or alive for the three genin? Naruto asks. Whichever one is more convenient, Tsunade says, if they are willing to surrender peacefully, we'll capture them alive. But if they are looking to fight, then we will take whatever measure necessary to ensure the success of our mission. That's exactly what we wanted to hear, Gara says. After the meeting, Tsunade and Ibiki gather the documents and head to Jirauchu's office to get a more detailed look into the ownership of the destroyed properties, leaving the youngsters on their own in the room. I Saribi Chan, you were pretty quiet during the entire conversation, what's wrong? Yujito asks. Well, it's not really my place to say anything, I Saribi says, I'm just a foreign civilian after all. Nonsense, you're part of the team now, of course you can make your opinions known, Naruto says. 
Naruto-kun is right Isoribi chan Yujito says, but there is something I need to ask you though. Go ahead. I know this might sound insensitive, but we really do need to know this, Yujito says, would you be opposed to using the Kaima form to help us fight in this mission? Ka Kaima form? Why would you need such a monstrosity? Isoribi asks. Well, we are in a poor town so there is a chance that the fight will end up spilling out to the ocean, Yujito says, while we could fight on water, our opponent are adapted at fighting in that kind of terrain, and Gara isn't exactly the best candidate to fight in those conditions. But if you're really uncomfortable with it, we can perfectly understand. If you can use water techniques even when you are not in Kaima form, that's good enough for us really, Naruto says, you don't really have to use your Kaima form. Yeah. That would be good too, Yujito says, we just need someone who can fight in the water instead of just on it. That I can do. I was always a pretty good swimmer, and I did learn a few water techniques that I can use out of Kaima form, Isoribi says, no matter how much I hate it, what happened to me did give me the ability to stay submerged for a long time with no problem, even without transforming into that monster. That would be perfect, thanks for all your help Isoribi-chan, Yujito says. I I haven't actually done anything yet, Isoribi says, blushing. Nonsense, you've helped us a great deal already, Naruto says. Yujito and Gara echo Naruto's sentiment, even Ginko nuzzles her snout against Isoribi's arm in support, bringing a smile and a deep blush to the girl's face. It's too bad we can't go outside, it's too boring here, Yujito says after a few minutes. We can't do anything about it. While we dealt with the genins in the forest of death, the fact of the matter is that we had all the advantages back then, and they have all the advantages now. Not to mention we have never had an actual confrontation against a Jounin without backup, Gara says, there is no doubt that if the Wagarashi family is aligned with Rakyushu Aoi, they already know that we are here and are looking for ways to eliminate us. If we go outside on our own, we risk being attacked by both the AIM squad and the Wagarashi family. Maybe we can just walk around a compound, just to stretch our legs a little, Naruto says. Are you sure that's a good idea? Yujito says, I mean, we are just guests here, and there might be places in this compound that Jirao Chuoyabin doesn't want us going to. I don't think there would be any problems, but let's ask someone, just as a sign of courtesy, Naruto says, it's better than being cooped up in here all day. That seems reasonable, Gara says, if they refuse then we will simply have to think of something else to occupy our time. After asking for and receiving permission to explore the compound, the four youngsters and one fox begin their slow trek around the compound. Suddenly someone runs right past them and pulls up a few meters ahead of them. Who are you and what are you doing in this compound? The person asks. We are shinobi of Kanahagakuro no Sado, Naruto says, we are hired by Wasabi Jirauchu Oyabin to investigate the strange happenings that has been occurring in this town. Oyabin hired a bunch of genin to investigate the incidents. The young man says, there is no way he would entrust such an important matter to someone like you. Well we are here with two veteran Jounin, they are merely discussing the specifics of the incidents with Jirauchu Oyabin right now. I thought Shinobi operates in four man cells, why are there six of you here? Well, this is a bit of a special case, Naruto says, so are you going to tell us your name? I don't want to know yours, and you have no need to know mine, the young man says, Oyabin placed his faith in you. If you fail, I will make Sue every nation in the world knows about your pathetic failure. Turning around, the young man runs away again, leaving behind a fuming Yujito, an agitated Gara, and a shocked Isoribi. Man I dates back in the shinobi hating mode again Naruto thought, at least he doesn't know Ibiki is here yet, or else he's really going to flip. There you kids are, where did you go all this time? We were just walking around Tsunade Ba-chan, Naruto says, not even looking back at the Senju. Yeah and ran into an incredibly rude person, Yujito says, still angry. Well, just ignore that person. We need to head back, Tsunade says, Ibiki is waiting back in our rooms so we can start planning out the specifics of the mission. Either Jirauchu arranged for Ide to stay away from the Kanohan inner Ide to learn that Ibiki is staying in the compound, because for the next three days, Ide never appeared in front of anyone in the Kanoha contingent again. Likewise, there has been no incidents ever since the Kanoha Nin's arrival. The group concluded that the Wagarashi's observers at the port must have tipped Wagarashi Kairoku off about their presence. We are just going to sit here and do nothing are we? Yujito asks, we do have to head back to Kanoha eventually for the Chunin tournament. We are going to have to alter our plans, make them come to us instead of us waiting for them to strike and using a counter-strategy, Gara says. 
Do you kids have any ideas how to go about that? Tsunade asks. I do have an idea, Yujito says, but it's risky. Well, let's hear it, Tsunade says, let Ibiki and I handle the risk management. When we faced the three AIM genin, they were a bunch of smug little punks. I doubt they took their embarrassment well, and they must be out looking for revenge, Yujito says, Gara, Naruto-kun, and I will set out in a small boat to one of the surrounding islands, under the guise of searching the uninhabited islands for hidden base of operation. The place where the AIM genin has the most advantage would be in the middle of the ocean. Aoi would probably be hiding on a nearby island to finish the job his genin started. Tsunade Ba-chan can head out in front of us and set an ambush on that island, while Isoribi chan will be our backup by staying close to us in the water as we sail out. Ibiki-san will stay in this town and patrol the street to put up the image that only the three of us are heading out, and you three are staying in the town to maintain the peace. That's not a bad plan, Tsunade says, risky, but not a bad plan. Well, you two are the veterans, Tsunade Ba-chan, Ibiki-san, Yujito says, do you have any suggestions on making the plan any better? No, that's a pretty solid plan. Isoribi has no problem swimming around in the ocean for a long time, her only problem might be exhaustion, so maybe just have her swim out a short distance, enough that the people on shore can spot your boat and have her come aboard, then to conserve her energy, Tsunade says, there are two risks we are taking with this plan though. 1. They might decide to take Ibiki on instead of trailing the three of you out in open water, and he'd be the only one guarding the town. 2. I have no idea exactly where you are coming ashore or where Aoi might set his ambush, even if everything goes according to plan. There are so many islands that just a few moments difference in the time of the Genin's attack will send you to a completely different island. If I set my ambush on the wrong island, you kids might end up facing Aoi on your own. Well, we should be able to hold him off long enough for you to find us Tsunade Ba-chan, Naruto says, and I don't think Aoi would be dumb enough to take on both you and Ibiki-san here in town. Just in case I can create a Kage Bunshin and have it henge into you and patrol the town alongside Ibiki. That will have to do I suppose, Ibiki says, under the time constraint, that might be our best hope. So, that's the plan we are going with then? Yujito asks. We don't exactly have much of a choice, we can't just sit around and wait for them to strike, Tsunade says, like you said, we do have to get back before the Chunin tournament. I think they know it as well, that's why they are trying to test our patience. Then all we have to do now is cast the right bait to draw out the big fish, Naruto says. After working out all the minor details, the group set out to execute the plan. However, before Tsunade can sneak off, Jirauchu sent his attendant to alert the Kanohanin that the daimyo of Chan no Kuni would be visiting the port in order to evaluate the situation, given the lack of incidents ever since the Kanoha Shinobi arrived at the town. Therefore, they had to adjust the plan and allow Ibiki and the Naruto clone to stand by and protect the daimyo instead of patrolling the town. Are you sure that's a good idea Tsunade Bachan? Naruto asks, what if the Wagarashi family decide to take out the daimyo instead? That would be the dumbest thing they can do, Tsunade says, they want to wrestle control of this port from Wasabi Jirauchu, and they are the only ones powerful enough to do anything of significance in this town. If they decide to make an attempt on the daimyo, while he is being guarded by shinobi hired by Jirauchu Oyabin, then all they are doing is exposing themselves as the ones who caused all the incidents and turned the entire town if not country against them. But what if Orochimaru orders Aoi to take out the daimyo to cause instability? Yujito asks, sure most of the blame will go to the Wagarashi family, but Jirauchu Oyabin and Kanohu would also be blamed for inadequate protection on the daimyo. In the ideal world we would be requesting reinforcement with this new information, but any backup would be too late if anything actually occurs, Tsunade says, like I said before, the plan we have now is the best plan we can come up with under the circumstances, and that's the plan we have to go with. Tsunade Ba-chan, you should stay here and help Ibiki protect the daimyo, Naruto says, if Aoido's come after us, we'll figure out some way to deal with him. That's out of the question, Tsunade says, that's adding too much risk to this mission. No, Naruto-kun is right, Yujito says, even if everything goes according to plan, we don't know which island Aoi is going to be hiding out in. There's no guarantee that you'll be able to reach us to be of assistance anyway. It's better if we redistribute our resources to account for multiple scenarios. Even if Orochimaru doesn't order Aoi to attack the daimyo, there's no guarantee that he wouldn't send someone else to do the job. 
After all, Aoi is supposed to be meeting with someone from Orochimaru's camp here in this country. But. Yujito is correct, Gara says, even you and Ibiki-san agreed that the three of us are at least two in level. We should be able to deal with Aoi and his squad. Not to mention with Ice Ribi sens assistance, we have the element of surprise once again. Yeah, they didn't even get to see what Naruto-kun and I are capable of. Gara was the only one that did anything against those three genin in the forest of death, Yujito says, Naruto-kun, and my abilities are still a large unknown to them. There's also something else. Not that many people knows this, but the three of us can also use summoning techniques, Naruto says, if push comes to shove, we'll bring out the big guns and summon help. Minato's going to kill me for this, but all right, we'll go with this updated plan, Tsunade says. The next morning, while Tsunade and Ibiki accompany Jirauchu to receive the daimyo, Naruto, Yujito, Gara, and Ginko in her fox form, sets out in a small boat. Isoribi has already moved to an unpopulated coastline under the protection of Naruto's bunshin under a hinge and set out to meet them once the group is far enough from the port. The entire group is apprehensive about the danger they are about to face if everything goes according to plan. Even Naruto, who only managed to defeat Aoi last time because Sasuke's Chidori damaged the rage in no ken. So how do you all want to go about this? Naruto asks after the group helps Isoribi on board. I looked at the map of the surrounding area last night, Yujito says, all the islands are practically filled with lakes and rivers, but the second island south of Degarashi port seems to have the least amount of water on the island itself. So if we want to make our stand, that is the best location for us, Gara says. Shouldn't we assume that our opponents are going to know that as well? Isoribi asks. Isoribi chan is right. If they are aware of the topology of the islands, they would most likely keep us from going there, Yujito says, even if you stays floating in the air on one of those sand platforms Gara, all it takes is one decent water attack to knock you out of the air. Even without my sand, I can still contribute to this mission, Gara says, it's different from my usual combat style, but Kurunai sensei and the two of you helped me train for this kind of situation in Kanoha already. I don't doubt it Gara. Naruto says, Isoribi chan the three genin are capable of fighting underwater, if the mask we saw in the forest of death is any indication. So if we encounter them while we are still in the boat, don't engage them in the water. But if we end up facing them on the island, get into the nearest body of water once the fighting starts. You will be our element of surprise. Understood Naruto-san. But what about the rage in no ken? Gara asks, the water could be a very dangerous place once the electricity starts flowing. The rivers and lakes are formed from runoffs from the hills, Yujito says, it's a freshwater source, so the conductivity is very low. It should be safe even after taking the rage and no ken into account. I asked one of the attendants, a thunderstorm just came through the islands two days before we arrived, Naruto says, the additional rainwater lowered the conductivity even more. Then it should be safe enough for me to stay in, Isoribi says, I'm just glad that I could be of some help instead of being a burden. You're never a burden to us Isoribi-chan, Yujito says, you're our friend. We might not have known each other for a long time, but Yujito-chan is right, you're our friend Isoribi-chan, Naruto says, and friends will never be a burden to each other. I agree with their sentiment, Gara says, however, we should save this small talk for later. I think there is a boat approaching us, and the dark cloud hovering overhead looks rather ominous. It looks like it's raining black water, Isoribi says. Oil. It's them, Yujito says. The only question is if Aoi is with them, Naruto says. Isoribi chan, stay on the boat, Yujito says. If a fire starts, let Gorazan put it out, your water techniques are our ace in the hole. No sen showing them all our capabilities yet. The air isn't all that humid, Gara says, I'm going to get a closer look. Isoribi was about to ask how Gara could accomplish such act when Gara places his left hand over his left eye. Up above him, a small clump of sand gathers and forms a small eye. Focusing his chakra, Gara sends the eye off toward the other ship to scout out the opposition. Don't look so shocked Isoribi-chan, Yujito says, and don't worry, the air around the hot springs are too humid for him to use that technique. I'm trying to concentrate Yujito, stop trying to distract me, Gara draws, something's wrong, there's only one person on that ship. His teammates aren't there with him. The ocean. Yujito screams, they're coming after us from below. The rain cloud is right over our head. Isoribi screams. Before the group can react, black rain cascades down from the dark cloud, soaking the ship with oil. Leaping out of the ocean, the two aim genin flings kunai after kunai at everyone on the boat. 
Gara's sand barely manages to block all the weapons, but not the explosion from all the exploding tags attached. The sparks from the exploding tags lights up the oil collecting on spots of the Kanoha Jinin's boat, starting up small fire all over the vessel. Sending out a sand, Gara manages to put out the fire, but all the sand is then rendered useless by the water technique from the remaining aim Jenin, sailing up next to the Kanoha boat with his own. Using the remaining sand, Gara forms a sand platform to lift Isaribian himself off the ship, while Naruto and Yujito uses water walking to engage the three aim Nin on the surface of the ocean. Instead of fighting the aim Nin in their environment however, Naruto and Yujito simply serves to hold off any pursuit from the aim Nin with the use of Kage Bunshin to fight off the aim Nin on the surface and various lightning techniques to keep them from attacking from below. Well, everything seems to have gone according to plan so far, Naruto says after the group finally settles on dry ground, we got to the island we wanted to head for. This beach should be dry enough that we can wrestle the advantage back from the three punks, Yujito says, Gara, can you use the sand on this beach to replenish your supply? It's a bit too fine for my liking, but I can make it work in a couple of minutes, Gara says, the cliff face behind us seems rather rich in various minerals. Good, I think we can hold them off for that long, Yujito says, your sand is our buffer against the rage in no ken, so take as much as you need. They're coming, Naruto says. Are they the real thing or more of those Aboro Bunshin? Yujito asks. They're the real deal, Naruto says, I Saribi chan stay close to Gara. Naruto-kun, what do you think? Yujito asks, Tojutsu? No, we still need to look for Aoi and report back, let's just make it quick, Naruto says, but still take up enough time for Gara to do what he needs to do. Got it, just play with them a little then, Yujito says, this is the last spot amongst all the different locations on all the islands that they want us to be at, so Aoi should be quite a ways away from us. Just let me know when you are ready Gara. For the next two minutes, the three aim genin threw everything they had against Yujito and Naruto, without coming remotely close to landing a hit. Even when they decide to bring more help via Mizu Bunshin, all the water clones were quickly dispatched by Naruto's Kage Bunshin, leaving the three aim genin completely frustrated. A few seconds after the two-minute threshold passed, tendrils of sand rise up from the beach and wrap around the three aim genin's wrists, ankles, and most importantly neck. Alive or dead? Gara asks from his spot in the back as though asking about the weather. Hey, What the heck, Naruto says, we can let them live for a while longer. Provided that they know something that we can use, Yujito says, so do you or don't you? Two of the three aim in tremble in fear, but the third is desperately trying to signal toward the Kanoha contingent that he has something to say. Controlling the sand, Gara brings him closer to the group and loosen the sand around his neck, allowing him to talk. I I overheard Aoi Sensei and Wagarashi Kairoku talking to someone working for Orochimaru yesterday, the Aim Nin says, that person promised that if Wagarashi can take care of the daimyo, Orochimaru will let Wagarashi run this port when Orochimaru takes over Cha no Kuni. Is Aoi going after the daimyo, Naruto asks. I I don't know the specifics, the Aim Nin says, Aoi Sensei only told us to attack the four of you. This person working for Orochimaru, do you know what he looks like? Yujito asks. I don't know his name, the Aim Nin says, I'm pretty sure I saw him during the first stage of the Chunin exam. Any distinguishing features? Gara asks. Silver hair, wears glasses, the Aim Nin says, I didn't get that good a look. Yokushi Kabuto, Naruto mutters, Miss Yumi Tsurugi and Akadu you are always teammate. All right, it doesn't look like we're going to get much else out of them. Gara, if you'll tie them up, Yujito says, we'll let the experts in Kanoha deal with them. We should get moving, Naruto says, we need to get to the nearest freshwater source. There should be one a bit further inland just over these cliffs, Yujito says, a river that should fit our purpose quite well. Gara, knock them out and take them with us, Naruto says, and we should probably play the role of the sloppy genin and leave a trail for Aoi to follow. That might just get him to underestimate us, Yujito says, good idea Naruto-kun. By the time Aoi Rakushu tracked down the Kanoha Nin, from his place up in the trees, he spots Naruto, Yujito, and Gara, setting up very poor invisible traps around the area. His three genin are knocked out cold and bound to the trees by Gara's sand. Smirking at the supposed naivety of the three Kanoha genin, Aoi moves around the edge of the clearing, looking for the best place to strike. Retrieving five kunai, Aoi fires them into the clearing, triggering all the traps and catching the three Kanoha genin in their midst. However, instead of being grievously wounded by the traps, the three Kanoha Genin simply disappears in smoke. 
recognizing Kanoha's famous solid clone techniques, Aoi flees from his spot, muttering under his breath all the while. Suddenly, a large wall of sand crashes down at Aoi from his right, forcing him to dodge to the left. Manipulating the sand, Gara forces Aoi to dodge continuously and pushes him to the river running down toward the beach. Finally regaining his bearings, Aoi uses the Kawarimi no Jutsu to get away. Those little brats, Aoi mutters, to think that they know a Kenjutsu like Kage Bunshin no Jutsu, Raiju Hashiri no Jutsu. Grabbing the Rage no Ken, Aoi barely manages to block Yujito's lightning attack with the lightning sword. Sensing movement behind him, Aoi spins around and swing the Rage no Ken at Naruto sneaking up behind him, only to have the sword goes right through and for Naruto to disperse and smoke. By the time Aoi turns around again, Yujito has disappeared as well. Cursing under his breath, Aoi tries to track down his targets again, but finds it much more difficult than he did previously. So they think they can play hide and seek with me, eh? Aoi says, let's see how good they really are. Who says we're hiding? Naruto says from the trees. We're just trying to get you to exactly where we want you, Yujito says. Renden. Suna Shigur. Aoi easily dodges away from the sand bullet, but he never saw the sand lands into the river behind him. Again sensing movement behind him, Aoi swings the Rage no Ken around again, slicing through Aisiribi Suiten. Suigun Zuma no Jutsu. However, the sword simply goes right through the water, and he's hit by the water, and lightning from his blade rocks his body, paralyzing him temporarily. You're probably wondering why fresh water from the river will carry such a charge, right? Yujito says, tying up Aoi, the sand bullets you dodge were more salt than sand. In a flowing river, that wouldn't really matter, Naruto says, but when it is trapped in a small enough body of water, the result can be even more conductive than sea water. For a jounin you're not very good at paying attention to your surroundings are you? Gara says, adding sand to ensure Aoi's imprisonment as Naruto seals away the rage no ken, for us to surprise you from behind so many times in one fight. Granted you were able to fend off every attack from behind, but your dependence on that sword is the cause of your ultimate downfall. We should probably report back, Naruto says, knocking Aoi out cold much like his three genin, with any luck, we might be able to get back before the daimyo shows up in town. When the group arrived back at Degarashi port, they find Wasabi Jirauchu's men patrolling the streets. Thinking that the patrols are merely for ensuring security for the daimyo's arrival, the group heads back to Jirauchu's compound and perhaps assists in the security effort. When they arrive, they find a daimyo sitting in front of a room, with Jirauchu standing next to him and the young man they met before pacing back and forth while casting occasional glances at the doors. Naruto-san, Yujito-san, Gara-san, Isoribi-san, you have returned, Jirauchu says. Yeah, we managed to capture Aoi Rakushu and his three genin, Naruto says, what's going on? Where are Tsunade-sama and Ibiki-san? Daimyo-sama's convoy came under attack by Wagarashi Kairoku on its way to this town, Jirauchu says, there was an enemy shinobi present in the attack, and Tsunade-san engaged the shinobi. The Wagarashi gang brought archers along, and in protecting Daimyo-sama, Ibiki-san leaped in front of several arrows meant for Daimyo-sama. It's not until we returned to Degarashi that we realized the arrows were poisoned. Tsunade-san is inside treating Ibiki-san's injuries right now. So the patrols outside Yujito asks. They are searching for any and all persons connected with the Wagarashi family, Jirauchu says, if we find out that they are connected to Wagarashi Kairoku or have knowledge on the attempted assassination, they will be charged with treason. I managed to stabilize his conditions and remove most of the poison in his system, Tsunade says, walking through the doors, he's going to need a bit of time to recover, but you can go ahead and see him now. Without even excusing himself from the daimyo, the young man rushes into the room to check on Ibiki, leaving most of the returning group in complete confusion. Not wanting to reveal how much he knows about Idate, Naruto puts up a confused front as well just to hide his knowledge on the matter. That's Ibiki's little brother, Idate, Tsunade says, answering the genin's unasked question. You mean the one that was tricked by Aoi and stole the rage no Ken? Yujito asks. Yeah, that's the one, Tsunade says, speaking of which, if we may be excused Daimyo-sama, I would like to listen to the genin's report on their mission. Of course Senju-san, please go right ahead, the Daimyo says. So how did it go? Tsunade asks once they've entered an empty room away from the contingent gathered outside the makeshift medical ward. 
we managed to capture Aoi and his aim Genin, as well as recover the rage and no Ken undamaged, Yujido says, normally we would leave it to Ibiki to interrogate them, but right now. I've already sent words back to Kanoha, Tsunade says, standard procedure, since we have a medical nin on hand in friendly territory, would be for me to stabilize the patient's condition, while we wait for Kanoha to dispatch a relief team, so that's what we're going to do. So what happens now? Gara asks. Like I said, Ibiki is going to need some time to recover, but he's not in immediate danger anymore, Tsunade says, the relief team should be here relatively quickly, I use Jayaku Kuchi's no jutsu to send word back to Kanoha to make sure they get the message as quickly as possible. By my estimation, it's going to take them three days top to get here. So all that's left for us to do is to secure the prisoner and make sure they can't escape. Jiraucho Oyabin said that there was a shinobi present in the attack, Naruto says, did you get a good glimpse of him? It was a young woman, she has some kind of a weird crystal keke genkai, Tsunade says, from her hat eight, definitely someone from a togaker. By the way, good job on evaluating this situation Yujido, without that last change in the plan, the daimyo probably would be dead by now. Thanks Tsunade Ba-chan, Yujido says, blushing. Tsunade, if you have a moment, Jirauchu says suddenly through the door. What's the matter Jirauchu Oyabin? Tsunade asks. Would your squad be staying in Degarashi for any longer? We are waiting for the relief team, so until they arrive, we're going to be staying in town. If it's not too much trouble, would it be possible for Cha no Kuni to request your team's assistance one more time? Depends on what it is, Tsunade says, we are kind of shorthanded right now. It should not be too difficult, it just requires quite a bit of manpower, Jirauchu says, while I do have a vast following, it's not enough to comb through the town, and the daimyo is quite adamant that we capture Wagarashi Kairoku and make an example out of him. Well, if it's manpower you need, Tsunade says, looking toward the youngsters, I don't think that Odo Kanoichi is still in town, so if you four are up to it, I can use my Kage Bunshin to help out in the search, Naruto says, that'll expose us to the least amount of risk. Even if the assassin is still in town, all she'll manage to kill is a clone. We'll go with that, Tsunade says before speaking up, I'll have Naruto spread out and help in the search. Thank you Tsunade, Jirauchu says, Daimyo-sama has promised that he'll be more than happy to pay for this additional mission if it's successful. With the amount of Kage Bunshi Naruto can create, it only took him half a day to find a cowering Wagarashi Kairoku in one of the old storehouses on the outskirt of town. The public trial and execution came the next morning, and Kanoha's release squad arrived two days after. Kurinai, Anko, Shizun, Gai, Tsunade says, did Minato really deem the situation dangerous enough to warrant sending four Jounin just for picking us up? My apologies Tsunade-sama, Kurinai says, but Hokage-sama has assigned another mission for this squad, and he hopes that you'll continue to lead the squad. Ibiki still needs treatment, it's not like I can just take him along, Tsunade says. Ibiki-san will be traveling back with us, Shizun says, I'm sent here to ensure he continues to receive treatment on his way back to Kanoha. Anko is here to make sure the prisoners don't escape, and Gai-san is here as protection. So what about you Kurinai? Tsunade asks. I'm here as replacement for Ibiki-san as the second Jounin on this mission, as well as second in command, Kurinai says, this new mission is going to take us right into Tano Kuni, where a Togaker is located. With just the five of us? Tsunade asks. We will be traveling to one of the smaller bases near the border of Hai no Kuni, Kurinai says, our mission is to take out that base so that it cannot pose a threat to Kanoha or Hai no Kuni in general. Oh all right, Tsunade says, before gesturing for Aisiribi, this little girl is our guest and helped us out quite a bit during this mission, so treat her well. Marino Idate is going to be coming back, but he helped us out quite a bit here too, when he fought off all of Wagarashi's thugs, while Ibiki was out of commission during the assassination attempt. The other four you can have fun with all you want Anko. Four presents? Anko says with glee, you're too kind Tsunade-sama. Yeah, yeah, Tsunade says, waving Anko off, look, we are all going back to the mainland, so we're going to tag along on this boat ride. We'll split off toward Ta no Kuni once we get back to the mainland. Very well Tsunade-sama, Guy says. All right, we don't have all day, let's get out of here, Tsunade says. So that's it for today, I will stop here, and hope you enjoyed this video if you do please hit the like button, share and subscribe, also don't forget to drink water, and do support fanfiction author link in description, take care bye.